First, I want to start out by saying I think it's important to understand the extent and depth of the militarism in our society. Since World War II, our whole economy has been based on the military and wars. Um, since 1945, the United States has invaded 390 times in over 100 countries. I know people don't really think about that. That's what I study. I study U.S. imperialism. Uh, we have covertly intervened thousands of times and we've bombed 28 countries. This is all since World War II. We live in a military economy. The political economy is based on militarism. We have a one trillion dollar a year budget. This military obsession robs the society both of money and intellectual and psychological energy to devote towards building human community. So we have uh, we've just deepened the oligarchic structure of what we call America, uh, which is not, of course, democratic at all. We're talking about U.S. America, and this system thrives on creating tensions because the profits all come from the wars. The wars and the military spending just continually deepens the, the, uh, the oligarchic structure that makes money on public, the public money actually. They make huge profits on public money. We guarantee uh, as the public to support the military industrial complex. And so all war is local. Because all of this spending is coming from us. It, it, it steals from us, it steals from our community, it steals from our schools, it steals, it steals from everything. So all war is local. There's no such thing as war out there. War is affecting everybody right here, every place. So it's local, it's local. War is not a national issue, it's a local issue. It affects everybody. And I think it's important to understand that the, the capitalist political economy we live in is based on both class, perpetuating class and hierarchy, and it requires expansion through exploitation of other people and the earth. That's, this is the way capitalism works. It's not sustainable, it's irredeemable, it's unreformable. No matter what we call it, it's not something we want to continue supporting. Thus, we have to also then look at ourselves. We have become dependent upon the political system to maintain our way of life. We become dependent upon the technology that is, requires oil to facilitate it. We have become distracted by all kinds of entertainment and television and the political system itself is a big distraction, in my view, really distracts us from becoming real nonviolent revolutionaries. And uh, so I would say that we have to take responsibility for re redesigning or reincorporating into ourselves an eco-consciousness and understanding that everything is connected at every moment, everywhere. And that requires in myself, and I'm sure with most people, a radical shift in the way we have been conditioned to think. We need each other. That's why we have Occupy. Occupy was a, is a dramatic shift from business as usual, thinking as usual, where life becomes perceived as more horizontal than vertical. Uh, leadership is shared and we actually have to create the new paradigm wherever we are. Every Occupy group in the world is basically rediscovering a new paradigm because the paradigm we grew up with is totally destructive. And I'll conclude, conclude with this. The system, the political economy we call capitalism and the society we call the United States and Western societies in general need to collapse. Without collapse, we are we are destroying everything.
system is destroying everything, and there's a few of us that are benefiting from it, but mostly we're not benefiting, and most of the people are not benefiting, the Earth's not benefiting, it's not sustainable. So the sooner the system collapsed, the better chances we have of survival. And we have to therefore create the new paradigm in the interstices of the existing society. We create the new society here. That's why it's Occupy Portland, not Afghanistan.